Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Disney Cruise Line Show. Coming to you from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, I'm your host, Pete Werner. Joined via Skype this week by my good friends, Dreams Unlimited Travel Agent and Real Estate Agent, Mr. Sean Falk. Hi. Associate Editor for The Diz, Ms. Denny Sunderly. Hi there. Uh, welcome, folks. Hope your week is going well. Uh, before we get started, just a reminder, uh, this show and many others that we produce are brought to you by dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. So please show your support for us by booking your next Disney Cruise Line vacation with them. That's dreamsunlimitedtravel.com, of which I am a co-owner. Just I should probably mention that. And uh, if you are interested in moving into the Central Florida area, we have a lot of great content and resources to help you out. MovingToOrlando.com is the website. Uh, we also have a Moving to Orlando Facebook group. And, of course, Sean is a registered, licensed real estate agent here in the state of Florida. So he can help you out if you have any questions. Sean, S-E-A-N, at MovingToOrlando.com. All right. So with those out of the way, let's, uh, let's go ahead and talk about rotational dining. Um, I forget, you know, having done so many cruises, Disney cruises, I forget that this is a unique concept. No other cruise line that I'm aware of does this. So let me just give everybody a basic overview of what rotational dining is. Um, there are three main restaurants on each Disney cruise ship. And you are assigned a rotation. So, for example, let's say, uh, you know, one night you're going to be in uh, Triton's. And that the first night of your cruise, that's where you're going to meet your server team, your server and your assistant server who will stay with you for the length of the cruise. They'll move with you from restaurant to restaurant and people develop very close relationships with their servers. I mean, for years and years to the point there are some people that like put in requests when they book their cruise. We want this server or, you know. Um, and so like one night you'll go to one restaurant, the next night you're in another, the next night you're in another, and then it begins again. And what they do, especially on the seven night cruises or the longer cruises, uh, they'll change the theme. They'll change the theme around <clears throat> the menus change. Um, it's a very unique way, uh, for cruise lines of doing this, of, of doing dining. Now, of course, there are other ships, uh, other restaurants on the ship. If you're on the Dream of the Fantasy, you have Palo and Remy, um, as well as Cabana's, which is more of a buffet style. Um, on the Magic and the Wonder, you just have Palo and uh, Cabana's uh, as well. So, But that's kind of the overview of rotational dining. Um, Denny, what would you add to that? Um, the early and the late seating aspect of it, um, I would definitely, you, you know... It, it depends on who is in your traveling party and um, and what your tra traveling party, how your traveling party wants to vacation. So you'll get a choice and um, you can say late seating or early seating. Early is right around 5.15 p.m. Late is right around 8.15 p.m. Sometimes, depending on when you booked and when you go to do your online check-in, you may be left with second seating because first seating is the one that, that just fills up quicker. Um, you've got a lot of families with young kiddos and so they want to go ahead and eat earlier and then get them to bed earlier. Um, we've always, even when the kids were younger, we always went for second seating. That is our very favorite. We don't want to ever be rushed in port. Um, we don't want to be rushed during the day on the ship. And if you've got a 515 um, dinner time, you want to be able to go back and get cleaned up. And so you can kind of do the you know, the clockwork on that, uh, you know, the time uh, work. And, and you've got to be back to the stateroom, you know, just that much earlier. And so um, there are going to be perks to both seatings, whichever one. Now, if you end up getting assigned a seating that is not your favorite or you want to make a special request of any kind dealing with dining on the ship, 
As soon as you step foot onto the ship, there will be a location for dining requests that you can go to. On the newer ships, on the Dream and the Fantasy, that location is outside of Enchanted Garden, down, uh, down one floor from where you board the ship. On the Magic and the Wonder, it's going to be in a different location. Sometimes it'll be in a lounge, but you can ask a crew member. And my my advice to you, because I've had to do this uh, several times before, as soon as they say, hey, the Sunderly family, and they clap for you, you book it like it's your job to wherever that um, dining special dining request location is. And you put your, you make that official right then. And sometimes that crew member can tell you right there okay done you're good to go you can request you know an the, another seating that kind of thing you can request a certain server that that type of thing but sometimes they won't be able to give you an answer right off the bat and so you need to you need to know that they're going to try to do the best they can and they'll get back in touch with you but that would be my advice is if you've got any kind of special anything you want to request make a beeline immediately as soon as your feet touch the lobby atrium carpet okay um very good points to raise now um generally speaking the restaurants are kind of similar on uh on all four ships uh enchanted garden is something that was done um in uh, uh on the dream and the fantasy um and i'm gonna and we'll, we'll t i want to talk about this enchanted garden my least favorite Right, I don't like Enchanted Garden. Um, they added Tiana's place onto the Magic and the Wonder. My favorite. Just. Oh, just on Wonder. Just on the Wonder. wonder. Sorry, mm -hmm. it's Rapunzel's. Right, I haven't done. That's right, I haven't done that. But Tiana's place on the Wonder, hands down, hands down, hands down, hands down. Food, atmosphere, interaction. Uh, the 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 Dixieland band that's playing, while you know throughout dinner, absolutely, absolutely, positively, I would eat there every single night. It was so so good. What about you, Sean? What what do you like? Um, don't like about rotational dining, and which one of them do you like? Um, I I love the idea of rotational dining. Um, I think that it's something all cruise lines should adapt. And I also think it would be a money saver for most cruise lines because with this, if you're doing a seven night cruise or even a three night cruise, I mean, with having three different dinings and everyone switching between them, the, the ship is going to serve the same meal every night for those first three rotational nights. So it would save them money on having, you know, if you're on Carnival, the menu changes in the main dining every single night. And there's a few that stay the same always, but they have to supply you know, five or six new options that can accommodate every single person that orders it um, if, if they want to. So to me, it just makes sense to do rotational. And so, you know, guaranteed you can serve the same menu over and over and over again. And it's two new sets of people. So I don't really get why other cruise ships don't cruise lines. Don't do it because uh, it makes sense to me financially. But um, I I love the Rapunzel restaurant. I cannot think of the name of it. it I had it in my head and it slipped my mind. But um, it, uh, I, I, the only problem there is that one time I was able to do it and we got a seat, uh, table really close to the stage. It was a great show. It was really enjoyable to watch. The other time we got a, the furthest away from the stage, we couldn't hear. We didn't know what was going on. It was all, So it was kind of just like this garbled noise happening around us and not like anything cohesive. So a lot of it depends on where you're sitting <coughs> and where, where those table requests come in. And if you are somebody who goes for first dining and you want to be make sure you're close to stages and stuff, Switching to second dining is the best way to do that because it's so much less uh, hectic and chaotic. Also, we get a lot of people that are like, we want to sit by ourselves. Switch to second dining. like if Because you're going to be able to sit by yourself 99% of the time on second dining because it's less popular. Um, so I love the Rapunzel restaurant. I agree with you, Pete. The Tiana's Place restaurant is phenomenal uh, for the show and the talent that they have there. It's so unique to get to hear uh, the Dixieland band. It's great. Um, I love animators. I love animators on the magic and the wonder much, much better than Agreed. I do on the, the dream and the fantasy. Absolutely. Um, 
I also I am not a fan of the the crush aspect of um, on the dream and the fantasy. I don't like it. I didn't like it. The well, first let's explain. Time I, let's explain to people what mm. you're talking about. Yeah. So um, on the dream and the fantasy um, in animators palette, they do have uh, on the they have screens all around. And Crush from Finding Nemo swims around. And if you've ever done Turtle Talk with Crush, it's a similar aspect to that, where he'll swim up to your table or over to your area and talk with uh, with the guests. The first time I did it, it was really cool because we were right by a screen. You could hear what was happening and Crush talked to us. And then this last time we went in February was my first time not being by a screen or a table. And so it was just like you're here and this thing's happening that you're really not a part of. And at that point, we're like, we're just going to have our own conversation and what's happening around us doesn't matter. And if you're going to do something that's underwater themed, having the look of the restaurant be more underwater looking would make sense to me. Whereas with anime, with every other restaurant, the theming is on point throughout. Whereas when they do the crush segments in Animator's Palette, it's just a really odd like the colors around you don't work and it's it's just a weird mix and of course they also usually have like tritons and lumieres um which is the basic if you've been on celebrity cruise line they the the main dining room it kind of looks like that like they may have like a slight touch where it's like oh there's a candelabra in the corner and like let's call it lumieres so they to me those definitely drop the ball by comparison but they're still as good as any standard cruise line option goes but there always is that one that one dining experience on each ship where it's just kind of like meh for the room where it's clearly was like a a standard a standard cruise line dining that they were just like let's make it blue and call it tritons and like there we go like that's it all right well i think the theming's a little bit more involved than that in in tritons and aerials i think they 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 do like especially the murals against that back wall and then a lot of the artwork that's on the walls tends to Mm -hmm. lean toward that but i and i i I, your point's well taken my first cruise that i did um we didn't know anything about rotational dining or any of that kind of stuff we had done a little bit of research but we we just were people that liked going to disney world and we're like we're ready to do a cruise so why wouldn't we do a disney cruise and so we just kind of showed up very green to the whole thing and um so it was on the dream and the first night we were in uh animators palette and we liked it we just didn't realize that we were going to rotate and so we just went back to the same place really confused and when we got there and just couldn't figure out what was going on they were like oh well on your card like it literally has like the letter a and it has the letter you know so that's animators palette and then now it has an r so you're supposed to be at royal table and i was like i would have never known this are you kidding me like we're like we don't work here like why how would i know this like so i'm like just how am i supposed to know the letter r on my card i've never even cruised before so just being um knowledgeable about it and the fact that it's a unique experience um also we got the coveted first dining on the first cruise i went on and we were pretty excited about it our second day was at Castaway Key, which also happened to be the night that they did uh, Everybody Can Do Formal. And um, so at 5.15 or 5 o'clock, when we had to be ready to go in the dining room. And my friend, who had act, who's the only one who had done a cruise, said, oh, it's formal. So, like, we need to dress up. And so I rented a tuxedo, not knowing that that's more formal than they're going for when they say formal. So I rented a tux for my cruise and uh, we all showed up to dinner in our absolute like wedding finery (laughs) ready to eat. And like nobody else, we were definitely the most overdressed people there. And I was like, I can't believe I left Castaway Key at three o'clock to make sure that I was back in time to shower, get in this tux and show up to this restaurant only to like be so overdressed. And I was like, I will never do first dining again. I was like, I missed out on 
all this stuff at Castaway Key. And it also, when we were trying to even figure out excursions and stuff, um, I knew the next in Nassau, we wanted to do uh, Atlantis and go over to the water park. And we ended up just being like, you know, we're not going to do it because we don't want our day to get cut short because we would have to leave at like two o'clock to be able to catch the bus back to the crew. So we're like, well, is it worth it to pay, you know, over a hundred bucks a person to go over there and have to come back? So things to consider when you're picking your times yeah. for rotations as well. And that's a good thing to point out that uh, if you if you want to know what restaurant you're at, as Sean mentioned, on your Key to the World card, down at the bottom, it's going to have a series of letters. And that's the first initial of the restaurant you're in that night. So, you know, you may see A or R or uh, uh, E for Enchanted Garden or, you know, whatever the restaurants are. But that's a you know a good point that you're not necessarily going to know that there is usually a card in your stateroom that outlines where you are every night as well, in case you mm -hmm. don't know that or miss that. So, Denny, you look like you were getting ready to say something. Yeah, no, I um, I've got our little key to the world here, and, of course you and do. something. There, well, you know, it's show and tell, right? So there's your. Um, there's you you've got your rotation so that's what the what that's what the fellows are talking about and then you've also got your table number so when you show up um to your to the host stand there in the rotational dining locations they're going to ask you what table number and you know it, it's it's right there and a lot of times you may not even realize that it's right there um it's it's important now. I do. I, I want to come to the defense just a little bit of Royal Palace and Royal Court on the 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 main dining room there mm -hmm. off of the lobby atrium, on the Dream and the Fantasy. Those, I love. I think that they took. I I really really enjoy um, Lumiere's on the Magic. I've mm -hmm. uh, you know that's the one we've been on the most, and so that's the one that I have kind of an emotional <coughs> tie to. That being said, I love the. Um, just the circular way, the way that they oriented the entire dining room, the tile mosaics of all the princesses along the back mm -hmm. walls. There's touches like Cinderella's carriage is right on the railing, the marble floor. There's inset, um, an inset uh, a princess crown in the marble floor. It's just, it's gorgeous. The backs of every chair has the different icons of the different princesses. So it's, it's just neat to stop and take a look at some of those, um, that some of those details and I think for me those those are my favorites although I'm right with you Sean the um, animators palette I, I think you were saying animators on the classic ships is what you like more than animators I do, on the, yes. yeah on the yeah, newer ships I it, it, I'm right there with you I've not been on the wonder but the but animators on the magic I love that place dearly on on every cruise that's longer than four nights that i do on disney there's at least one where i'm not going to go into the dining room um or palo or i'll do something like cabanas or just nosh because i don't feel like getting you know you don't feel like you relax you don't feel like you know getting dressed up and you know all that stuff but um yeah um and especially if you are going to request certain things so if you're taking a seven night cruise you're going to end up at one restaurant three times. And it is a thing of where there's certain restaurants that are going to change up what it is that they're doing. So, you know, uh, the the first time you do animators palette on the magic or the wonder, it's going to be the characters on the walls. And then there's like a surprise ending. But then the second time in your rotation, you come back to do animators palette is where you're going to get to draw your own characters and they show up on the, on the big screens. Um, so there's a chance that you might get one of these restaurants a third time as well. Um, and you don't necessarily know which one you would get on a seven night dining to be that third time. And it's, it's, Obviously, it makes it very difficult to coordinate when you get the opportunity to pick Remy or Palo and get that reservation. You don't know beforehand what day is going to be your repeating day. Um, obviously, that can be changed up when you get on the ship if there's availability. But you kind of just have to go for it and hope that that's kind of how it works out. Because there's not really a set way of ensuring that the night you, you personally booked Remy is also the night that you would have been in the restaurant you didn't want to go to multiple times. Um, I've done it before and it worked out. It happened to fall exactly in place the way I wanted it to. 
But if it doesn't, there's not a ton that can be done at that point because of how limited Palo and Remy can be. Um, you might be able to switch dining times and kind of rotate your rotation with that. And also with choosing table numbers, we do get people a lot. They're like, we'd like a seat by the window. And I'm like, that's fine. But I don't. No, you can't necessarily get a seat by the window every night because where the seating is, it's not like table 71 is just by the window every single time. Right. Um, or in every, or in each restaurant that even has windows. So it's, um, it's very open ended. So it's it, anything can be requested like that. But even with that, you might only get it once during your entire cruise because of where that table is going to be situated. Um, and that's really important to some people who are first time cruisers who do say, we really, really want to be able to look out the window while we're eating, and that may not be possible to, right. to do. All right. So and there you have it. There's our discussion on rotational dining on the Disney Cruise Line ships. That will do it for this week's show. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back with you again next week with another edition of the Disney Cruise Line show. Have a great week, uh, everyone. <laughs>